Hey folks, I'm attorney Roger P. Foley and today I'm going to talk to you about depositions in criminal cases. Depositions uh, are oral or spoken testimony given under oath prior to a hearing or a trial. They're important to both the prosecutor and the defense, but because I'm a defense attorney, I want to talk to you specifically why they're important to defense. When you take a deposition, you're inquiring about all the information that a witness has. That information is going to help you determine whether or not your case is a case that's meant for trial or a case that should be pled. Let's talk about who's present at a deposition. The defense attorney is present. The witness is present. Sometimes the prosecutor is present. Probably most of the time the prosecutor is present. Sometimes they don't show up if, they're, if it's a police officer who's given testimony. Uh, but if there's a civilian witness, the prosecution always is there. Uh, but most times the prosecutor is there. Um, the court reporter. That's it. The defendant's not there. Friends and family aren't there. Um, and where does the deposition take place? Most of the times it takes place at the courthouse. Sometimes it occurs at the state attorney's office. Sometimes it occurs at the defense attorney's office. And sometimes it occurs at the court reporter's office. Uh, it, it just depends. I don't like to do depositions at the state attorney's office. So I either do them at the courthouse or at the court reporter's office when I'm in Palm Beach. When I'm in Broward, sometimes I do them in my office because we're in the same building. Uh, but generally, those are the places that the depositions are taken. Now, I made a couple of notes here. All right. How is that deposition going to help you? Well, as a defense attorney, I'm going to ask the very same questions. Some may be similar, but almost exact questions of a witness that I would ask during a hearing, during a motion hearing or a trial. Why am I doing that? Well, First thing is I want all the information, right? I want to make sure that this is a, a motion case or a trial case. So I want to find out all the information that the witnesses are, are going to testify about, right? It gives you a very high likelihood of what they're going to say in court, right? Because it's under oath. Second, it preserves that testimony, meaning once they say it, it's recorded, the court reporter is taking shorthand and they go back and over the usually about the next two or three weeks, they transcribe it and turn it into a transcript. They put everything in English, and it's a nice report. It, Mr. Foley asked the question, tells the question, says what the witness said. Okay, why is that important? Well, what happens if I'm in a motion or a trial and the testimony of the officer changes? Well, obviously, I now have a transcript, and I can show to the court through cross-examination that the officer or the witness, whoever it is, has changed their testimony. If they've changed their testimony, right, if they gave testimony in January and now we're in April or May and the testimony is different, obviously that's going to show a reason to look at their credibility, to question their credibility. So it is super important in, in cases. Now, what do I use depositions for? When I first started taking depositions 15 years ago, I would ask very general questions. Now as time has gone by and I realize the way the process in the court works, I'm very definitive in my questions. I, I ask questions that are general, but then I'm very determined. You went to the police academy in February of 2015, yes? Yes. You were taught classes on how to, you were giving classes on how to be a police officer. Yes. Some of those classes uh, taught you how to do report writing. Yes. Yes. The reason that you write reports is because the prosecutor relies on them. Yes. Because the judge relies on them. Yes. The defense attorney relies on them. Yes. And you yourself, officer, you rely on them. Yes. Now I'm setting down information because later on in the deposition, I'm going to ask him more questions. So let me explain a little further. When you learned how to do report writing, they told you to be accurate. Yes. They told you to be detailed. 
Yes. They told you to, to write the complete story. Yes. And you, you do that in your report writing. Yes. Now maybe I'm 10 minutes later into the deposition and I say, officer, show me where it, it states that you saw the drugs in my client's hand. Looks at it. It doesn't say that. Oh, okay. But this is your whole report, right? Yes. Doesn't say it. No. When you gave a deposition uh, back in January, you didn't mention that either. No. And I asked you where the drugs were. I don't remember. Well, let me show you. Now I show it to him. So in fact, officer, when asked that question, you, you gave a different answer, did you not? Yes. Folks, what do you think that's going to do to a case during a motion or a trial? It, it's going to show that the officer, you know, either he's lying or that his memory is not very good. But either way, it calls his testimony, the credibility of his testimony into question. It's important. If you have a criminal case and you are fighting the charges, you want your attorney to take a deposition. Let me give you an example. I had a case several years ago, and, and I'll never forget this case. And in the police report, it says that my client uh, burglarized a home, went into a garage, and stole a bicycle. And it also said that there was a show up, that the police officer captured a suspect, and that there was a lineup, and that the the victim in the case, uh, an 18 year old, had said uh, with 100 percent certainty he identified the the defendant uh, as the person with uh, who had stolen his bike because he had actually seen this person steal a bike out of the garage and ran after him. So I'm taking the deposition. This is in my office, and during the deposition, I'm asking the the gentleman questions about his home, about the garage, whether the garage was open or closed, whether his bicycle was inside the garage, outside the garage, in the driveway, those kinds of things. And I get to the point where, you know, I, I say, okay, well, you called the police. Yes. And let, let me make this, make sure I understand. You, as you were exiting the garage, you saw this male leaving the garage. Yes. And you yelled at him. Yes. And you said, stop. Yes. And you said, that's my bike. You don't have my permission. Yes. And the guy get, ran with the bike and got on the bike and got away. Yes. And during that time, you had an interaction with this person for 15 seconds. Yeah, that's fair. 15 seconds. Was it 10 seconds? Was it 20 seconds? No, no about 15 seconds. Okay. And during that time, you looked the individual directly in the face. Yes. And you had a conversation with him. Yes. I mean, you were shouting. Yes. But you looked at him in his, in his face. Yes. Okay. When the police arrived, you gave a description. Yes. And you said that he was approximately six feet tall. Yes. You said that he had dark colored skin. Yes. You said that he had short hair. Yes. You said that he had dark eyes. Yes. You said that he was unshaven. Yes. Okay. Shortly thereafter, the police showed you uh, an individual that they believed was a suspect. Yes. And you identified that suspect. Yes. On a scale of one to 10, how sure of you that that person that they showed to you was the person that stole your bicycle? six? Wait, what? A six? Yes, sir. A six, six out of 10. You're six out of 10 that this was the person? Yeah. Did you tell the police officer that? Y yes, I did. What did the police officer say? He said, is that the freaking guy? Is that the freaking guy? And I was like, oh, that, that's the guy. So you told the officer six out of 10 and that's what he said? Yes. 
Okay, folks. So I read a police report. It said that the defendant was positively identified by the victim, 100%. In deposition, it turns out that it's 6%. 60%. percent that means 40 reasonable doubts. What do you think happened with that case? That case got dismissed. So do you understand why it's so important to take a deposition? Listen, every case isn't like that. Sometimes you take a deposition and you don't find out anything good. Sometimes you actually find out more bad. But the goal is to get as much information so your client can make an informed decision on whether to go to a motion or to go to trial or to take a plea. Second thing it does is if you're going to go to a motion or you're going to go to a trial, it locks those witnesses into that testimony. And oftentimes when, you, when there are bad things, the plea deal gets better. Sometimes like in this case, the case goes away. Um, sometimes the charge is totally changed for a lesser charge. So there are so many benefits. If you are charged with a crime and your attorney is not taking a deposition, you need to know why. It's imperative that you take a deposition. A deposition helps win your case. I'm attorney Roger P. Foley. Thanks for listening.